in order to live a life which is really creative, deep, joyful. One of the first steps is that our mind is quiet. And I can understand that the mind is usually not quiet, especially in the times when there is a crisis. So how can we connect to ourselves and others in the times of crisis, in the times of fear? It's a big challenge, I can understand. But in this very moment, can we connect to whatever our heart is feeling, our mind is, is going through? Just simply be aware of it. Not try to bring any change. Don't try to alter it. Simply be aware of it. There can be some kind of restlessness, agitation in the brain. The mind is usually reacting from the past experiences, past memories. But at the same time, there is a possibility, a potential in all of us to be aware of it. In the beginning, it can be simply a noticing of it. And can we allow this simple awareness to go deeper? In this retreat, we are going to explore, allow this awareness to flower. Usually in our daily life, thought energy is the most active. And it is dominating our psyche, our relationships. And this thought energy is usually based on our past memories. And of course, these memories which produce thinking process is necessary for our life for survival. But the question is, is this energy everything in our life? When we depend only on the thought energy to solve all the problems of our life, then we become a kind of prisoner of our own thoughts and memories. So there is no freedom. All the time mind is roaming around in the memories, in the past experiences. And this becomes a heavy burden, a heavy stress for all of us.
Now with the same quality of energy, we try to deal with this stress, with this agitation. And it doesn't help. So mind is never at peace because we are all trying to find peace through the same energy which is creating noise. And this thought energy is, is highly conditioned. It has its role in the physical world, in the technological world, in our survival. But this energy itself cannot bring peace inside us. What will bring peace is something which does not depend on any past memory, any knowledge. So that means this energy can be available right now because it does not depend on any past experience, any knowledge, any memory. It is part of life. Life which is happening right now. And that energy which is not conditioned Almost everything is conditioned. Our body is conditioned through evolution. The brain is conditioned through evolution. The thought activity within the brain cells is conditioned. And we live in this field of conditioning or programming. And this is something universal. Wherever you are born, whether in India, in Israel, or in America or Middle East, we are conditioned by our environment, by our cultural settings, religious beliefs, language, the ideas, the education. So this process of conditioning is universal. The way our brain reacts is universal. Brain is actually is functioning in broadly two modes, as I see it. One is it is seeking security, and another, another is seeking pleasure. So security and pleasure. This is how the brain, human brain has developed. It is a response in search for security. And that is fine. All animals have developed like this as a response to seek security. But uh, human brain became very complex over the this long process of evolution. It developed many capacities within the brain, which perhaps other animals don't have that highly complex structure. And this brain also started producing psychological and emotional structures. So we started creating these belief systems There is something perhaps higher than us. Most of the religions were born like this, this idea. So you see, the human brain has developed on these principles. There is a search for security, avoidance of pain and suffering. 
And with the search of security, there is also search for pleasure. They are same, almost. And this brain, not just personal or individual. We may think that it is my brain, but is that so? We identify as saying my, and of course we have these separate bodies, so it looks like, but it is actually a human brain. We name it, of course, label it, and we have our own specific experience, set of experiences, memories, knowledge, that's fine. But it's basic, essential structure, nature is same. So it's a brain of humanity. The consciousness, the psyche works on the same principles. It's not separate, actually. That's why J. Krishnamurti used to say, you are the world. Each one of us is representing the whole humanity. There is no much difference. There are just differences on the outer layer, superficially. We may speak some different language. We may believe in something else than the other. But belief system is the same. What we believe in can be different. But the basic structure of belief is the same. So you see, this whole psychological structure is belonging to this humankind. And we are all operating in this field of conditioning, looking for security, looking for peace, looking for happiness. And one of the mistakes we do when we separate ourselves, we say, my conditioning is greater than yours. It is like saying, like, to which I am bound to is better than yours, but there is nothing greater or lower in it. It is the same. The human psyche, the human brain is operating through conditioning. So there is nothing great, actually. There is not great freedom in it. We are all tied to certain things and it has its place. There is a context. But now we are asking, is there something which is truly free in human consciousness? Is there something which is not conditioned? It's a difficult question. But we must ask this question. And to ask this question is a sign that there is a potential in all of us to explore something beyond our conditioning. All these teachers who have spoken, whether Buddha and other teachers, they are showing this, this potential that we can go beyond our conditioning and relate, connect from a totally different dimension. So can this conditioning be quiet here and now? How does it happen? You may think, you may wonder, But if you don't answer it immediately from the thought, then 
this miracle can happen here and now. The whole field of conditioning can be quiet here and now. If you listen totally, completely, from all your being, if you listen not through just your thought, your mind, if you listen not just through your past knowledge, but you listen with total openness of your heart, of your being, without any resistance, without any separation, without any expectation, if you listen, then the, this field of conditioning is quiet, here and now. You can experience it, this. So this, this deep listening, which is not hearing from the ears, but perceiving from your whole presence, can be a door to that freedom. Which means you are not holding on to your conclusions, your opinions, your ideas. They may be there. Let them be there. But you are not operating through them. You are not engaging through only that. In this moment, now another energy, another dimension is coming into action, which is usually unknown, which is usually lying dormant in our daily life. And in this retreat, we are trying to awaken that dormant energy, which is in all of us. We have forgotten it. We have not paid attention to it. So is it, it is an existential reminder. An existential reminder to wake up from this mechanical sleep, from this mechanical way of living. And this waking up is magical. It can happen any time, any moment. It doesn't depend on any circumstances. It doesn't depend on what you believe on what you think. And this is the great power of it, the great beauty of it. And you can see when we are deeply listening and not reacting, the mind is quiet, here and now. And this listening is born from this space of stillness, quietness. And that space of stillness we may call it pure awareness. Is waiting to be flowered. Is waiting to manifest in our daily life. It's not that we have to create it. What is created can be destroyed easily. An emotion is created, it can be destroyed easily. A thought is created, it can be destroyed easily. A feeling is created. So what is the creation of the mind 
is subject to temporary existence, subject to destruction. But something which is not a construct of the mind, which is inherent in life process, in the, in the manifestation of life. Life in itself cannot be destroyed. What we think can be destroyed, but life in itself, the form can be destroyed, the appearance can be destroyed, but the life is indestructible. And awareness is part of this life. Listening is part of this life. So can we bring trust to this dimension of our living, this dimension of our consciousness? We are trusting too much the dimension of thought energy, which creates fear. Actually, fear energy and thought energy, they are not separate. This we will explore it. I am just uh, dropping some questions, which we will go in very detail. But now just listen. So when we are living just at the level of thought, reacting from past memories, there is always a fear. Everywhere, it's not, please don't think about just yourself. It is what I am talking about is for the whole humanity. Now consider yourself as part of whole humanity, wherever you may be. Just for as an experiment, for a moment, let go, put aside all sense of boundaries. There, there is no boundary. It's only mind which, is, which creates the boundary. Each one of us who are sitting here, we are an, ex an expression of that timeless life. We have forgotten it. And this is the work of our self-inquiry to remind ourselves what we have deeply forgotten. We are an expression of life. We are an expression of this universal energy of life. 